Republic accesses CCTV footage of the accused in the Bengaluru blast case. Seen checking in into a hotel in Bengal with fake IDs. Mahadev app investigation continues. SIT team of the Mumbai police crime branch interrogating Sahil Khan for about three hours. Efforts on to rescue a six-year-old boy trapped inside a bore well in Madhya Pradesh's Rewa district continues for over 20 hours now. Massive crackdown by the Jammu and Kashmir police on terrorists and their associates in Kishtwar district. Is Pakistan getting active? Hyderabad's BJP candidate Madhavi Lata speaks to Republic ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. We're getting you that exclusive conversation. The BJP is releasing its uh, Sankalp Patra or Manifesto tomorrow. It's a big day. On Sunday morning, you have the Prime Minister who will be on stage at the BJP headquarters a little after 8 a.m. 8 a.m. in the morning, the Prime Minister on stage. Uh, that's expected tomorrow. After which, the Prime Minister takes off for Mysuru. He will be in Mysuru and then head to Mangaluru for a roadshow. It's a super political, super Sunday ahead of the 2024 elections. And we here at Republic TV will be live, will be live early, getting you all the political action. I want to go across to Abhishek. In fact, I'll get, a, get across Abhishek as well. Tomorrow is also Ambedkar Jayanti. It's Ambedkar Jayanti. You have the BJP releasing its manifesto tomorrow. The Prime Minister on stage, along with uh, the senior most leaders of the BJP, all on stage. They will be flanking him. And uh, that is expected to start a little after 8 a.m. We'll go on uh, possibly till about 10 a.m. And then the action will shift to Karnataka tomorrow, where the Prime Minister will be on stage with another former Prime Minister, H.T. Devegowda, and campaigning in Mysuru. And after which, he will go to Mangaluru for a roadshow. So, just telling you viewers, it is a big, big Sunday that we have in front of us as we head towards the Lok Sabha elections. The first phase, of course, will be on the 19th of April. I'm going across to my colleague Gursimran, uh, joining us on this story uh, to get in, uh, uh, you know, a perspective of what people are expecting from the BJP as they release their manifesto. Gursimran, all eyes will be on uh, the Prime Minister tomorrow. The Prime Minister, as he, uh, you know, will be on stage as well. Yes, Niranjan, there is absolutely no doubt that every, uh, everyone will be looking for the manifesto or the Sankal Patra of the Bhatti Janta Party that, that will be released tomorrow. And it is very important that the people are really looking at it because the uh, government has done walk the talk, be it uh, each and every issue that they have brought in in their Sankal Patra or the manifesto earlier in 2014 and 2019. They have completed all of them, be it the abrogation of Article 370, be it the Ram Mandir. So they have done it, they have performed it, and now it will be really very interesting to watch that how things will move from here. Because now, uh, in every political area, the Prime Minister has said that uh, the vision for the 2047-2047 is all set, and the party is now heading, the government is now heading towards the Viksit Bharat. So what will be the Viksit Bharat Sankal Patra be like? It will be interesting to watch that how it will come out uh, with the schemes. Because uh, if we speak of the key agendas of the Bharatiya Janata Party's manifesto beat in 2014 or in 2019, the BJP has completed majority of them. That means there will be some key interesting manifesto promises that will be coming up tomorrow when it comes to the Jammu and Kashmir, even when we spoke to the state leadership as well of the ruling party, uh, since there were some of the uh, recommendations that have gone from this side only. Because the BJP has launched a massive drive in which they used to collect, uh, they have done it for more than two weeks that they used to collect uh, the uh, recommendations from the common people. And the majority of the recommendations that have gone from the Jammu and Kashmir, that also includes the promises that the union government has done. That is the full promise in Jammu and Kashmir uh, that is also already slated and the full uh, restoration of full statehood. So it will be interesting to watch whether that will be part of this manifesto and what more it will be. Because uh, uh, if we go by the uh, last 10 days uh, statements by the prime minister, and also uh, his interaction 
with the young india with the youth of the country it may uh, it hints that uh, the manifesto that will be coming tomorrow will have a lot of things for the youth of the country so uh, tomorrow all eyes will be on the dgp sankal patra that will be released tomorrow morning by prime minister narendra modi and also expected is the home minister and the head of the manifesto committee rajnath singh niranjan okay uh stay with me uh, tomorrow i'm 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 just uh, taking our viewers through some of the details the prime minister has been saying in in the recent rallies that uh, the he says the 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 real picture he he says whatever has happened in the last 10 years is only the trailer he says the real picture or, or the real action will begin now and he has been warning that his government will not stop going after those corrupt so look at the uh, statements of the prime minister in the last few days and weeks he has said his government will not stop in their mission to ensure that india is a fully developed country by 2047 so you can expect an economic road map for india 2047 uh, you can expect something for india's youth something for women and tomorrow is also ambedkar jayanti so there will be something in that document Uh, for every section of society now the prime minister the fact that he will be there himself at 8:30 in the morning uh, telling us that there could be some big announcements that will be made by the bjp when the manifesto is unveiled tomorrow so all eyes will be on that so join us live on republic tv on republic media network on all our sister channels republic tv republic bharat republic bangla and republic kannada as we get you the full details of the manifesto one and uh, get you that super sunday tomorrow is a super sunday because it's not just uh, not just the manifesto uh, but you also have uh, you know the prime minister in battleground karnataka where he will be doing a big big rally with another former prime minister he will be on stage with devegowda and then uh, there is also a, a road show so watch out for that a political sunday coming up big political super sunday coming up ashwin is with me live ashwin are you there ashwin is joining us live from uh, kerala he's a correspondent there and he's also been uh, you know uh, moving from kerala to tamil nadu and getting us a sense a pulse of uh, the mood on the ground ashwin uh, the manifesto of the bjp the manifesto of the congress party has been uh, debated right uh, what are the expectations from the bjp's manifesto tomorrow ashwin Oh, well uh, one of the biggest expectations from what i hear from the ground is that a uh, developed country is something that everybody is already in sync with niranjan in fact uh, uh, the people who i spoke to on the ground are also uh, saying that there has to be a cohesiveness in uh, their vision and there has to be a, a cohesive uh, documentation of the vision and that is perhaps uh, people are expecting and right now i am in chennai this is called as tower park in anna nagar and uh, there are lots of people who have already taken uh, interviews of and i think one gentleman has joined us uh, let's ask him tomorrow the bjp is uh, uh, releasing the manifesto so uh, you know from uh, tamil nadu perspective how how do you how do you see this what do you expect yeah of course uh, as uh, the whole india knows very well and tamil nadu is contributing in all the industries and all the aspects in a very better way obviously we expect uh, the manifesto should talk much about uh, importance to tamil nadu that is what we expected from the manifesto the prime minister has uh, also you know over the past years whether it's uh, uh, holding a you know calling the chinese premier here in mahabalipuram yeah. to holding the kashi uh, uh, you know tamil sangam yeah. to uh, the Seng goal yeah. to having visited uh, tamil nadu at least nine times this year alone yeah. don't you think there's enough uh, all, already there is a, a vision that tamil nadu should be brought to the forefront do you agree with that um it is not exactly agreeing but thanks uh, to our prime minister he has done so much uh, regarding that whatever you said okay but at the same time we are not expecting that we expect the growth of tamil nadu and the employment for our youth in tamil nadu and we want our uh, prime minister to give much importance to tamil nadu definitely i hope so he will give it and we uh, expected from him and we also the prime minister has been very consistently talking about uh, fight against corruption yeah. and uh, we have said about against his very uh, vocal against the dynastic politics which is uh, inherently there uh, caught in tamil nadu uh, so how do you see is uh, yeah well and uh not exactly the how he can able to give importance to the corruption 
But only thing is the corruption should not available in any of the government offices. That should take uh, take care. Yeah. Our prime minister should take care of everything because without correction, cor corruption, people should survive yeah. when it will happen. Yeah. The whole India is expecting that. All right. As so, a general, I'm talking. Yes, yes. So uh, this is something on the ground. Niranjan, yeah. I've spoken to uh, at least a dozen people. They have different views on many things, and obviously the the excitement is uh, uh, definitely increasing. They want to see what is the document uh, which the BJP is going to put out tomorrow in terms of their manifesto. Niranjan. Yeah, thank you for that. Let me also go across to Riyanka. Riyanka is joining me live from the national capital. Riyanka, you know, just getting in a sense of what people uh, want, expect from uh, the BJP. The BJP, of course, has questioned the Congress manifesto, but all eyes will be on them tomorrow. Uh, what are some of the general expectations uh, from the different sections of society? Uh, what we're getting to know tomorrow at around 8.30, the BJP is going to release its Sankal Patra, the manifesto for 2024 Lok Sabha polls in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, JP Nanda, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Home Minister Amit Shah. So it's going to be uh, a high-stakes event that is going to be focusing on what the BJP promises to the people for the elections. Well, uh, we also know that the BJP had received 1.5 million uh, suggestions through the Namo app as well. Well, and the major focus dependent on was development, youth as well and also other areas. Now if we talk about the expectation of people, they are looking for the development in uh, several areas, the upliftment of youth and also uh, if we talk about women here, women empowerment is also a key focus as well as the empowerment of farmers. So these are a few uh, highlights that is going to be focused tomorrow uh, when uh, the manifesto is released so we will take a look at the significant development that come up uh, we will be getting in all the details from the ground tomorrow at 8 30 the launch will be happening at the BJP headquarters here in the national capital all right uh, thank you for joining us uh, with those details uh, Ashwin Gursimran and uh, Riyanka uh, thank you for joining us Let's move on and get you some more news now. The biggest headline is uh, from uh, Bengaluru, where we've accessed some more visuals of how these terrorists, those who bombed the Rameshwaram Cafe in Bengaluru, how these terrorists were easily walking around, entering hotels, signing in registers, signing up and, and, and giving their names as different people of, of, uh, of the fake Adars that they created. We have some of the details coming in. Uh, I have my colleague uh, Prajwal joining us with the details of that. Prajwal, how did they get there? Uh, where did they get their fake Aadhaar, fake IDs made? What is with the Shivamogga link? Before I go across to Prajwal, here's a story of the latest developments so far. devastating bomb blast laid waste to one of the most popular cafes in Bengaluru on the 1st of March. India's top anti-terror agency NIA was roped in to lead the hunt for the terrorists who had orchestrated the attack. And now within 45 days, the agency has busted the vicious ISIS terror nexus and the terrorist trio responsible for the devastation. Terrorist Musavir Hussein Shazib, who had placed the bomb at the cafe, and Abdul Mateen Taha, the mastermind of the blast, were arrested from Bengal. As per sources, the two men had been living in West Bengal for three weeks, checking into small hotels and living under aliases before the central agency zeroed in on them. The two arrested terrorists were produced at an NIA court which granted a three-day transit remand, following which they were brought back to Bengaluru. Republic also managed to access CCTV footage from the hotels where the two accused were staying in. The two terrorists, who claimed they were from Maharashtra, had moved from hotel to hotel in different parts to avoid suspicion. They had also presented different fake Aadhaar cards at each hotel they were in. 
The two accused were brought to Bengaluru during the wee hours of Saturday morning and taken to the detention cell in Madiwala. Later on Saturday, the two terrorists were sent to St John's Hospital for medical checkup and then produced before a magistrate. The special court of the NIA's magistrate has now gone ahead and granted uh, the National Investigation Agency a 10-day custody of uh, both the accused, uh, Abdul Mateen Taha, as well as uh, Muzaffar uh, Shazib uh, Hussain as well. And it is being understood that both the accused uh, will be taken uh, to the blast site as well. And a spot inquest will be conducted to essentially go ahead and understand as to what happened during the course of uh, going ahead and placing the bomb. And uh, they will also be looking at the mode of payments through the dark web via crypto wallets uh, for all these anti-national activities which had been carried out by various ISIS modules uh, across the course of time in Karnataka. Meanwhile, CM Siddharamaya congratulated the NIA team's efforts. Thank you, NIA and also uh, the Karnataka Polish people. They are uh, they could able to face the accused persons and arrested them in Calcutta. With the blast master mind now in custody for the next 10 days, it remains to be seen as to what else the NAA is going to uncover regarding the ISIS terror nexus and its foreign handler. Bureau Report, Republic TV. There's an update on the Mahadev uh, betting scam. It's a scam that broke out before the five state elections last year. A former chief minister was under the scanner. Several actors in Bollywood under the scanner. The latest name being Sahil Khan, an actor in Mumbai who was interrogated by the SIT for about three hours today. Here's a full story. The probe into Mahadev betting app continues to deepen and the investigation has now widened. Actor Sahil Khan appeared before the Mumbai police to record his statement regarding his alleged involvement in the Mahadev betting app case. The special investigating team of the Mumbai cyber cell had previously summoned Sahil and three others in December 2023. But he failed to appear for questioning at that time. Sahil is known for his roles in films such as Style and Excuse Me. Currently, he works as a fitness expert and founded his own company called Divine Nutrition. According to the FIR, the scam is estimated to be worth approximately Rs 15,000 crore. Saurav Chandrakar, a 28-year-old and 43-year-old Ravi Upal are considered to be at the heart of the operations that have amassed Rs 6,000 crore through the illegal betting app. Last year, Ravi Upal was apprehended in Dubai by local authorities. An ED investigation uncovered a vast network providing illegal betting in various games operated by Mahadev Online Book. Betting included poker, card games, cricket, badminton and tennis and even extended to allowing bets on the Indian elections. Platform is accused of match fixing, money laundering through cryptocurrency and rigging games to ensure profits for panel owners and heavy losses for players. Mumbai Police's SI team will probe Sahil Khan in Mahadev betting app case. Bureau Report, Republic TV.